The Mortal Kombat franchise is one of the most recognizable in all of gaming, and when it comes specifically to the fighting genre, it's Elder God status. The series celebrates its 30th anniversary here in 2022, and has produced well over a dozen titles over the last three decades. We've come a long way since the original seven characters that made up Mortal Kombat 1, as the cast has evolved 11-fold over the years. We've gotten some of the most iconic faces in video games from Mortal Kombat's ever-growing roster, but not every new combatant has been a home run. And that's exactly what we're honing in on for this series as we aim to pick out the characters who made the smallest impact, lacked the most inspiration, and had the least charisma when they debuted. We're splitting the franchise into three distinct chapters, the early 2D games, MK1, 2, 3, and Trilogy, the 3D games, MK4, Deadly Alliance, Deception, and Armageddon, and then the NetherRealm Studios modern era games, MK2011, MKX, and MK11. Today we're focusing on the first chapter as we note which characters were introduced for their first playable appearances in each title, and which of those were just the biggest strikeouts in each respective game. Also, yes, there are other spin-offs and non-fighting Mortal Kombat games as well as some handheld versions, but we're sticking to the standard console fighting entries for this list here. I'm John Velociraptor Guerrero for Event Hubs, and these are the worst characters introduced in each Mortal Kombat game, MK1 through Trilogy. Round one. Mortal Kombat. The first Mortal Kombat has a meager seven character cast, but every one of these fighters has proven to be a success as they've all been brought back numerous times in sequels and they're all renowned in a similar manner to Street Fighter II's World Warriors. Now that said, we're still picking a worse from this iconic roster, so let's eliminate our way down to a least best of this bunch. Scorpion and Sub-Zero are poster boys for the franchise and two of the most iconic characters in video games of all time, they're out. Sonya Blade and Johnny Cage both have plenty of charm and memorable moves, and Raiden's the freaking god of thunder and lightning. They're all out too. This leaves us with just two playable combatants left, Kano and Liu Kang. Now, you'd think Liu would get a free pass here as the main protagonist of the franchise, but honestly, he's always been kind of a bland hero who, well, is almost always elbowed out in popularity by other more interesting picks. He's at his absolute blandest in MK1 as a kind of Bruce Lee ripoff who comes across as more annoying than charismatic. He doesn't yet have his most iconic move in his bicycle kick, and his fatality probably isn't even fatal. Kano at least has a cool cybernetic eye and comes across as a gritty and hate-worthy villain with formidable attacks. Liu is just a generic guy in a generic black pair of pants with white shoes who gets overshadowed by pretty much everyone else. He gets much better in MK2 and beyond with more memorable appearance, moves, and finishers, although we will point out that the developers have killed him off multiple times and tried other characters as protagonists. But if we're picking a worst of those introduced in Mortal Kombat 1, Liu is somehow surprisingly our pick. Round two. Mortal Kombat 2 MK2 brought seven new characters to the playable realm, including Baraka, Jax, Shang Tsung, Kung Lao, Reptile, Melina, and Katana. Similar to MK1, none of these stand out as franchise worsts, but we do have to pick one, so let's whittle it down. Katana has proven a fan favorite, Ten points, and we know better than to offend Melina fans. Also, she's honestly in the running for top 10 best characters in the entire franchise, so there's that, but also we don't want to offend her fans. Shang Tsung is arguably Mortal Kombat's best bad guy despite never really being the most powerful and never being on top of the totem pole, and Jax was easily one of the coolest new additions to MK2. Reptile gets mixed reviews from fans and hasn't gotten the most love from developers over the years, but his moveset and fatalities were awesome, and his multi-layered backstory where he's one of Shao Kahn's top assassins, but is actually motivated by the fact that he's the last of his reptilian race and wants to try to revive them, it really wasn't the worst. This leaves us with Baraka and Kung Lao, two characters that often wind up with the short end of the stick when it comes to Mortal Kombat's lore. Baraka is essentially a grunt or a kind of jobber who is often tasked with doing the dirty work for the bad guys, and Kung Lao has never really escaped the shadow of fellow Shaolin monk Liu Kang, and has been sacrificed to bolster other characters' status more than once. Oh, and also he's a pacifist in Mortal Kombat. Both characters have cool gimmicks as Baraka has vicious swords that protrude from his arms and Kung Lao has a bladed hat, but these two made the smallest splashes of the MK2 newcomers. Despite having one of the coolest fatalities in the game, we're gonna have to give this one to Kung Lao. 
As much as we appreciate Kung Lao's hat shenanigans, Baraka's extremely lethal sword arms were always a good bit more exciting and memorable. He's not a bad character by any stretch of the imagination, but the worst new playable character in MK2 award has to go to Kung Lao. Round three. Mortal Kombat 3 The franchise hit a new groove with 1995's Mortal Kombat 3 as the fighting evolved with a slew of new mechanics and finishers. It also brought with it no fewer than 8 new playable characters including Sindel, Striker, Shiva, Cyrax, Sector, Smoke, Cabal, and Nightwolf. You could also play as bosses Shao Kahn and Mataro via special codes, and honestly, Mataro could easily be our pick here if we wanted to include him in the running. He's a massive centaur who doesn't play by half of Mortal Kombat's rules as he can't be hit with projectiles, has ridiculous attacks that take up half or sometimes the entire screen, and has a hurt box even when he's knocked down. But Mataro was designed specifically to be more of a unique boss challenge than a playable fighter. The more interesting answer for Mortal Kombat 3 is Mr. Curtis Stryker. Now in a world of supernatural ninjas, elder gods, and cybernetically enhanced fighters, Curtis Stryker is… a guy. He's actually a cop, but you wouldn't know it at first glance as he's wearing a baggy blue shirt, some generic black pants, and a backwards hat. You know, like cops do sometimes when they're putting on random articles of clothing for no reason. His moves were kind of lackluster next to the fantastic fireballs and teleports of other characters as he used grenades and a nightstick and eventually a machine pistol in Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. And this character left people wondering what the heck they were supposed to feel more so than a feeling of satisfaction. Stryker was actually supposed to be in both Mortal Kombat and Mortal Kombat 2 by the way, but was replaced during development by Sonya and Jax respectively. He was made much better when he returned in MK2011, where he looked like an actual SWAT officer, but Stryker was easily the most WTF of the MK3 newcomers. Round four. Ultimate MK3 and Trilogy Mortal Kombat 3 saw a few evolutions that also welcomed newly playable fighters in, and so we've distinguished these two updates from vanilla MK3 as they brought in an additional five newcomers together. These include Jade, Ermac, Human Smoke, Noob Saibot, and Rain. Jade and Noob Saibot had great debuts and have both been regulars in the series ever since as a result. The inclusion of Ermac and Rain really started to get the whole MK Ninja palette swap meme going, but both had distinct attacks and styles that were both satisfying to perform and interesting to discover. That just leaves us with one newcomer left, Human Smoke. Human Smoke had a decently cool story as he stood as something of a what if Smoke hadn't been turned into a cyborg and could keep being friends with Sub-Zero kind of a thing, but as a character he didn't bring much to the game. Hardcore fans might take issue with us calling him a Scorpion copy because he had faster walk speed and can pull off a few juggles that Scorpion couldn't, but you wouldn't know that unless you're a competitive MK3 player. He otherwise had Scorpion's spear, teleport, and even combo animations. His decapitation fatality felt pretty underwhelming even for the mid-90s, and his other one didn't make a whole lot of sense. Like Stryker, Human Smoke would become a much cooler character in 2011, but felt widely uninspired when he was first introduced in Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. So what do you think of our picks? Do you agree with our choices of Liu Kang, Kung Lao, Stryker, and Human Smoke? Or are there other characters who should take their places as the weakest new additions in each game? Chime into the comments below with your thoughts and please like this video and subscribe if you enjoy this content. Once again, I'm John Velociraptor Guerrero for Event Hubs. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.